the Queen appeared in high spirits as she held an in-person audience with the President of Switzerland and his wife at Windsor Castle on Thursday, marking her first official engagement since a week-long break on the Sandringham Estate for her 96th birthday. The monarch, who is celebrating her Platinum Jubilee this year, smiled broadly as she shook hands with Ignacio Cassius and his wife Paolo Cassius before posing for photographs in her oak sitting room. Although the 96-year-old has been using a walking cane for several months, she appeared to go without it for today's audience, wearing a blue pattern dress and her signature three-strand pearl necklace. The Queen was all smiles as she shook hands and posed photographs with the guests. Her Majesty also wore her fruit-themed sapphire and diamond grapes brooch, which features a sapphire bow and 16 small diamonds shaped like a bunch of grapes. It was inherited from the Queen Mother. The Queen received the audience of Mr Ignacio Cassius, who was in the country for post-Brexit trade talks, and to sign a joint statement on enhancing relations between the UK and Switzerland. The Queen holds multiple audiences, one-to-one, unrecorded and entirely private meetings, a week with members of the diplomatic community. Though, according to the Royal website, she also welcomes political, religious and military leaders and people who have won prestigious cultural prizes. The conversations are short, lasting just 20 minutes or so. The Queen yesterday flew back to Windsor in a helicopter after spending time in Norfolk, where she celebrated turning 96 last Thursday. Before boarding the helicopter, the monarch was photographed being driven away from Wood Farm, a cottage nestled in the far reaches of the country estate, the retirement home of her late husband Prince Philip, who passed away in April of last year. The Queen has told how the Duke of Edinburgh loved the cottage and part of its attraction was because the sea was so close. While there, she was seen visiting her stable on the estate with racing manager John Warren for four consecutive days, putting any specific health fears at bay. The Queen has been suffering from mobility issues in recent months and has been forced to cancel or miss several high-profile events. Courtiers have since suggested the monarch should not be expected at any public events in the future ahead of time and will confirm on the day. According to reports, Buckingham Palace said the Sovereign is hoping to attend the state opening of Parliament in less than two weeks' time on May the 10th. But confirmation is expected closer to the time or on the day. The monarch has opened Parliament on all but two occasions during her reign. The exceptions were in 1959 and 1963 when she was pregnant with Prince Andrew and then Prince Edward, when her speech was read by the Lord Chancellor. In just over a month's time, the Platinum Jubilee Bank Holiday Weekend will get underway, celebrating the nation's longest reigning head of states, 70 years on the throne. Festivities include Trooping the Colour, Beacon Lighting, a service of Thanksgiving, the Epsom Derby, a pop concert at Buckingham Palace and a spectacular Jubilee pageant on the streets of London. It has not yet been confirmed how many of the high-profile events the Queen will be able to attend, but is especially keen to attend the Derby. According to reports, the Queen may travel to Trooping the Colour by Range Rover instead of a royal carriage for the first time in her 70 years reign to boost her comfort after suffering from mobility issues. The monarch may make the journey from Buckingham Palace to Horse Guards Parade by a 4x4 as part of several contingency plans being drawn up by officials ahead of the Platinum Jubilee weekend. The Queen's most recent public appearance came on March the 29th at the Thanksgiving service for her late husband, the Duke of Edinburgh, at the Westminster Abbey. But over the past six months, she has withdrawn from several other events historically central to her diary, including the Remembrance Sunday service at the Cenotaph and the annual Commonwealth service.